Breaking, North Korea just threatened the United States. Look what they just did. North Korean state media just warned the United States that there would be a super mighty preemptive strike when U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said that the United States was going to look for peaceful ways to get North Korea to hand over its nuclear weapons. President Donald Trump will take a hard line with North Korean leader Kim Jong un, and it has gotten this full response via the Rodong Sin Mun official North Korean newspaper. In the case of our super mighty preemptive strike being launched, it will completely and immediately wipe out not only U.S. imperialist invasion forces in South Korea and its surrounding areas but the U.S. mainland and reduce them to ashes, it said. The era of strategic patience is over with North Korea. Even lying Paul Ryan thinks North Korea is a threat. Allowing this dictator to have that kind of power is not something that civilized nations can allow to happen, Ryan said. Share this if you stand behind our military men and women in this. We will not be bullied. We are the United States of America. God bless our troops. Share this and comment God bless our troops. Let's get this prayer train rolling. Rolling. Top U.S. ally reveals shock new intel discovery. Immediately proves Trump right. America's allies in France have promised that they will soon release indisputable proof that Syrian dictator Bashar Assad carried out the April 4 chemical attack that reportedly killed at least 74 people and injured more than 557. We will provide proof that the regime did indeed organize these strikes with chemical weapons, French Foreign Minister Jean-Marc Ayrault reportedly announced Wednesday, adding that the analysis was still underway. In a few days I'll be able to provide proof. If true, the proof would shatter the Syrian leader's fierce arguments that the attack, which involved sarin gas being deployed on men, women and children, was a mere fabrication concocted via some sort of conspiratorial alliance between radical Islamic terrorists and the U.S. government. Our impression is that the West, mainly the United States, is hand-in-glove with the terrorists, he said in an exclusive AFP interview last week. They fabricated the whole story in order to have a pretext for the attack. The widely panned dictator even went so far as to suggest that photographs from the scene showing the children who died from the attack had also been staged and were unconvincing. We don't know whether those dead children were killed in Kanshi Khan, he claimed. Were they dead at all? Who committed the attack if there was an attack? What's the material? You have no information at all, nothing at all, no one investigated. So every indication is against the whole story, so you can say that this play that they staged doesn't hold together," Assad added. The proof promised by France would not only serve as an indictment of Assad but also as vindication for U.S. President Donald Trump, who responded to Assad's alleged attack by launching 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles at Assad's Shayrat Air Base. Since the attack on April 6, the U.S. president has faced stern criticism from Syria's allies, all of whom had blasted him for crossing a so-called red line. What America waged in an aggression on Syria is a crossing of red lines, a joint command center comprised of Assad's allies and Russia, Iran and several militias reportedly said in a statement following the attack. From now on we will respond with force to any aggressor or any breach of red lines from whoever it is and America knows our ability to respond well. Irrefutable proof would destroy this narrative, thus providing Trump with the upper hand in his diplomatic relations with these rogue regimes. Regimes, watch, Tommy Lauren returns, issues urgent Trump message. Watch and spread this. The famous Tommy Lauren has returned, and she has a powerful message for the world. After being attacked by establishment cronies and rhinos, Tommy Lauren made an explosive return by explaining the Trump doctrine, this is America first and we are sending a message to the world, we are playing a new game, and we have a president who actually wants to win the game. Welcome back, Tommy. We are happy to hear your voice again. Tommy has time and time again shows that she understands the best course of action to make America great again. Tommy Lauren tells us that we should all be supportive of Donald Trump's war against ISIS and terrorism. This comes after some isolationists complained about Trump's foreign policy. However, Trump made a promise to us, he is going to stop radical Islam, and we accept. Lauren says, 
the apology tour is over, which is an obvious reference to Obama's failed foreign policy debacle. Tommy also mentions that we have a president who is willing to enforce red lines, unlike Obama. What a refreshing speech from a true conservative, especially after listening to rhinos flood the airways. The establishment hates speakers like Lauren. The mainstream media loves to attack Lauren. They have shown time and time again that they have no decency and no standards. The rhinos, conservative detractors, and the media need to watch out, because we demand more journalists like Lauren. We do not need more mainstream media lies and more deception. We need the truth, and thankfully, journalists like Lauren still exist to remind us that there is still some integrity out there. Lauren was one of the few journalists with the courage to attack former President Obama. Lauren was one of the few journalists who was ready to support Trump, despite the so-called never-Trumpers. Hopefully, the media market sees the demand for journalists like Lauren, because we need more of them. We cannot keep producing these liberal journalists who would rather cram their twisted agenda down our throats. We need to restore journalist integrity. Thankfully, Donald Trump and his administration has helped the media industry. Trump has exposed the mainstream media and has created an environment where journalists like Lauren can succeed and thrive. We should all support Lauren. What do you think about Tommy Lauren's big comeback? Share this article on Facebook and let us know what you think because we want to hear your voice. Voice, just hours after Fox News announces Bill O'Reilly's departure, look what was spotted. Within hours of the Fox News announcement that Fox News host Bill O'Reilly would not be returning to the network, all references to him were erased from the show that bore his name for years. All graphics and other references to the show referred to it as The Factor, instead of its longtime name, The O'Reilly Factor. O'Reilly was ousted in the wake of multiple allegations of sexual harassment. O'Reilly has not admitted any wrongdoing. However, Fox has paid about $13 million in settlements over the years to O'Reilly's accusers. After a thorough and careful review of the allegations, the company and Bill O'Reilly have agreed that Bill O'Reilly will not be returning to the Fox News Channel, 21st Century Fox said in a statement Wednesday. Dana Perino, who hosted The Factor Wednesday night, touched upon O'Reilly's departure, but not the reasons why he left. Before we get to the other big stories of the day, we want to address a situation many of you may already be aware of. Bill O'Reilly, who hosted this program for 20 years, is leaving the Fox News Channel. We know that you, his very loyal viewers, will have a lot of feelings about this and we will talk more about it later on in the program, she said. Perino also spoke about O'Reilly at the end of the show. It is the end of an era here at the Fox News Channel, she stated. As we mentioned earlier, Bill O'Reilly is leaving this chair and this network after more than 20 years. Bill has been the undisputed king of cable news, and for good reason. He is an incredibly talented broadcaster who raised the bar for interviewers everywhere. He has also held his staff to exacting standards in his quest to put the best possible program on the air, and they are great, she said. As Perino continued, she omitted O'Reilly's name from the show's title. And you his audience, responded in record numbers, making the factor the number one cable news show for more than 16 years. You have also been loyal, and we can't tell you how much that means to everyone on the factor, she added. O'Reilly will be replaced in the 8 p.m. time slot by Tucker Carlson, who in January replaced former Fox News host Megyn Kelly in the 9 p.m. time slot after Kelly left Fox for NBC. Carlson's Tucker Carlson Tonight has been a huge ratings success in that time slot. The 9 p.m. slot will be filled by The Five, a political roundtable show that currently airs in the afternoon. Afternoon, just in, Trump administration makes move that'll have supporters rejoicing. The Trump administration has temporarily blocked the enforcement of an Obama-era rule for methane emissions from oil and gas production. The rule would cost the oil and gas industry an estimated $320 million to $500 million per year. EPA is continuing to follow through with President Trump's Energy Independence Executive Order, said EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. American businesses should have the opportunity to review new requirements, 
assess economic impacts and report back, before those new requirements are finalized. Further, Pruitt said the energy industry and other interested groups will now be able to comment on the rule before any further action is taken. Pruitt's action came in response to the American Petroleum Institute and other industry groups that opposed the Obama-era rule. The industry has opposed the standard as unnecessary and duplicative. It doesn't make sense that the, Obama, administration would add unreasonable and burdensome regulations when the industry is already leading the way on methane reductions, API's Vice President of Regulatory and Economic Policy Kyle Isakower said when the Obama administration announced the rule. The last thing we need is more duplicative and costly regulation. In a letter to the groups opposing the rule, Pruitt said they had raised at least one valid objection, and that there were a number of unanswered questions about implementing the rule. Noting that under the Clean Air Act, those considerations are grounds for reconsideration of a rule. The regulations were adopted last May and were part of former President Barack Obama's efforts to fight climate change. The regulations have been opposed by many states. During his tenure as Oklahoma's Attorney General, Pruitt was among those suing the EPA over the rule. Environmentalists oppose any changes to the rule. They are proven low-cost ways to capture methane instead of letting it pollute our air, and the last administration put in place standards to make sure we do just that, said Michelle Robinson, a director at the Union of Concerned Scientists. Joanne Spalding, chief climate counsel for the Sierra Club called Pruitt's action a thinly veiled attempt to take back this rule that was finalized and already in effect, in effect, professor who threatened to assassinate Trump learns his fate. Liberals hate Donald Trump so much that they seem to think it's okay for them to publicly threaten his life. This week, however, one liberal lunatic learned the hard way that threats on Trump's life won't be tolerated. A college professor at Fresno State University in California recently called for Donald Trump to be executed. Breitbart reported that back in February, lecturer Lars Meshkak wrote that Trump must hang in order for democracy to be saved. To save American democracy, Trump must hang. The sooner and the higher, the better, Meshkak wrote. The tweet, which has since been deleted, also included an image comparing Trump to Lenin, Stalin, Hitler and other dictators. Daily Mail reported that Fresno State University has just announced that Meshkak will be on pay leave for the rest of the semester after taking a voluntary leave of absence. This came a week after Meshkak publicly